welcome back to knowledge science i am amopi baradar this is the second episode of my astronomy series we will be learning about neutron stars what are neutron stars neutron stars are the remnants of supernovas supernovas result in two possible things those are black holes and neutron stars black holes and neutron stars so the black hole will be learning in more detail in future episodes but it's just beyond a region called the event horizon nothing can escape not even light meanwhile if the density because of the iron core it can't fuse anymore if it is very dense it becomes a black hole but if it's not as dense it becomes a neutron star so why is it called a neutron star well it's because it's made up of neutrons well i'll explain all matter is composed of three particles proton neutron and electron which have a positive neutral and negative charge respectively the iron core due to the immense pressures the protons and electrons fuse into neutrons so what is remaining is neutrons so that's why scientists have an original name neutron stars because they compose of just neutrons neutron stars are very dense for example if one teaspoon of neutron star matter is uh, weighs about the same as uh, five cars five cars about the same as five cars that's how dense it is if the sun became a neutron star which has equal mass the neutron star would be around the size of new york new york city maybe a little smaller this would be new york city uh, the neutron star would be slightly smaller but it's very dense so the mass is the same as the sun neutron star there are three types normal neutron stars pulsars and nanotars there are 3000 currently discovered neutron stars now we will learn about pulsars why are they called pulsars pulsars are are uh, neutron stars that have the jets what causes these jets these jets is how do the pulsar form the pulsar is formed when a star spins very rapidly when that star goes supernova due to angular momentum the neutron star spins very very rapidly sometimes even 700 500 to 700 times a second 500 to 700 times per second on average so pulsars are called pulsars because they emit a pulse this pulse is caused due to the rapid rotation the rapid rotation of the pulsar causes a bulge causes a bulge due to centrifugal force and these jets are due to the immense spinning that matter is ejected from the jets some of the and due to this due to the rapid rotation it also emits a kind of pulse when the first pulsar was discovered it was nicknamed as lgm1 what does lgm stand for is little green man little green men because they thought due to the regular regular pulses caused by the new pulsar's rapid rotation they thought it was alien aliens were sending it somehow some sort of aliens were sending it but it didn't turn out that way they found out it was just a pulsar a well known the most famous pulsar is the crab pulsar located in the middle of messier 
M1, also known as the Crab Nebula. This is Crab. Also known as the Crab Nebula. That's why it's called the Crab Pulsar. It was uh, formed when long ago, around 1054 AD, that Chinese astronomers catalogued a supernova which now has formed the planetary nebula called the Crab Nebula. And due to that star spinning rapidly, it became a pulsar. Now let's talk about magnetars. And also, they are currently 2000 pulsars which have been discovered. 2000 pulsars. Now let's talk about magnetars. Mag and magnetars are formed when a star has high high concentrations of mm, high concentrations of nickel, iron and cobalt which is very rare. And because of this, they have a very strong magnetic field and they keep the magnetic field even after they go supernova. So that's how magnetars are formed. Magnetars are very rare. They have very they have a very powerful magnetic field, which is on average trillions. Trillions of times more than the Earth's. If I write that down in z if with the number of zeros you can get to know it is this number. Trillions of times higher than Earth's magnetic field. This can be Earth's magnetic field. Magnetars is around a trillion times more powerful. Magnetars also as I said are very rare. Currently out of the 3000 discovered neutron stars only 31 confirmed magnetars. Only 31 confirmed magnetars have been discovered. Only 31 out of the 3000. So you can imagine how rare they are. The nearest magnetar is on the other side of the Milky Way. It is 50,000 light years away. 50,000 light years away from Earth. If you take uh, this as the Milky Way, this is the center. We are around here, the magnetar would be around here, on the other side of the Milky Way. That is the closest and the first discovered magnetar. Its name is SGR 1806-1806-20. It's located in the constellation Sagittarius. It is one of the 31 known magnetars. Magnetars have very powerful magnetic fields. So if you took your spaceship towards a magnetar and it was made of iron or something, then your spaceship would probably be ripped apart due to gravitational and mag magnetical force magnetical forces. So, it's, so the most powerful magnets in the universe are magnetars. You can't get more powerful than the magnetars. Also that's why they're called magnetars. Magnet is in the name. Because of their magnetic field. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. Thank you. Bye.